here yesterday. Uh, you can be opening your Bibles, please, to Joshua 14. Joshua, Old Testament, Joshua 14. And we'll start reading in verse 6 this morning. But as we uh, head that direction, I do want to say how proud I am of Brother Matt and what's been happening here. I've watched it since uh, Crossway Ministries' inception. And to see the addition of people and then the addition of buildings and the addition of different things that are going forward just tells me that God has his hand on what's happening here. And it's never without adventure. Uh, everything from the toilets blowing up yesterday to who knows what else, right? And that's in part what I want to talk to you a little bit about this morning. Um, have you found Joshua yet? Yes. Joshua 14, and I'll read probably a little more scripture than I would normally, but I want to be sure that you're going to get the picture here. Joshua chapter 14. The time frame, and I'll give you this setting, was after Israel had finally come into the land and taken the land that God had promised them. They were supposed to go into that land a year and a half after they came out of Egypt. But when they came up against um, the border of the promised land, they sent in 12 spies, two of whom were Joshua and Caleb. Caleb will be the feature of our story today. And they came back, those two, and they said, let's go take the land. But the other ten came back and said, no, nope, can't take it. Giants in the land, oh, it's a beautiful land, but no, nope, can't take it. And that unbelief caused Israel to wander in the wilderness for an extra 38 years that God never intended for them to do. And in that 38 years, a whole generation of Israelites died. Out of the 603, 550 men that started out of the Exodus, only two, think of it, only two entered in the promised land. What was the difference? The difference was faith. Amen. The difference was a desire and a heart that wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, wholly followed after God. So 38 years pass, a year, another year and a half, of course, from the initial leaving. Then there's five years of fighting when they finally decide to go in and fight and take the land. And of course, Joshua is leading. Joshua is a type of our Jesus, Amen. right? Moses is a type of the law. He can't lead you into the promised land. But the new covenant under our heavenly Joshua can. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so Caleb believes and he walks through those five years of battle and fighting and ongoing. Uh, and, and you know, Israel outside of Ai never lost a battle. Mm. Because you don't lose when you're on God's side. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When you're doing what God has called you to do, the giants are going to be in the land. The opposition yes. is going to be in the land. Trials and tribulations will come. That's right. But you won't lose Amen. if you'll... Holy, follow after the Lord, and you'll believe Him. Amen. Let's take a look at them as they come to a point where they're dividing up the inheritance of the promised land. And the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, now that's important, I'll get into it later, said unto him, Now you know. The thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. You know, we can do that to one another. We can discourage people as easily as we can encourage them. Yes. You need to be careful what you talk to each other about. Amen. And you need to be careful how you address situations that happen in this local body. Praise you God. need to be careful. 
uh, because you don't want to discourage someone whose inheritance is right here across my oh, ministry. Amen. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? Be careful. Yeah. Because it won't end up good for you if you're the entity that tries to destroy what God is being mm. is building. And so Caleb comes and he says, um, I gave him word again as it was in my heart. Verse 8, Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly, see it, W-H-O-L-L-Y. Oh, this is so important. I wholly followed the Lord my God. What brings us together in, in, in a unit is that every individual completely follows the Lord. Amen. That's vital. Amen. Because God doesn't deal with people just in groups. He deals with people in individual and then forms groups. Yes. Yes. And, and you can do more together than you can apart. Praise God. And that's something we have to learn. Now, the body of Christ is more divided today than ever before. But if we're going to get something done for God, there has to be a unity and a belief and a holistic following of the Lord. Verse 9, And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trod shall be thine inheritance. Wow. Caleb, what you saw is going to be yours. Amen. And your children's. See, what you believe and what you fight for, what you work yes. for spiritually, yes. Is also going to affect your children. Yes. That's right. And thy children forever, because thou hast there, is again, holy, follow the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years. Even since the Lord spoke this word unto Moses, he's been waiting forty five years to get to his inheritance. While the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. Simply put, he's 85. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. See, our strength, it doesn't come from the natural. Amen. It comes from the supernatural. God supplies strength when you're where you're supposed to be. Even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Amen. Give me this mountain. Whereof the Lord spoke in that day. For thou heardst in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be, the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out. Guess what? The giants are still there. The cities are still walled and fenced. But Caleb, after fulfilling the job that God had given him, says, Give me this mountain. God can help me take it. It doesn't matter about my strength. It's the strength of the Lord. And I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron, Hebron, for an inheritance. And I want to minister to you a message entitled, Give me this mountain. Amen. Give me this mountain. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity that you have given me to share the word of God with this congregation, these people. We pray once again for the presence of the Holy Spirit to come and anoint and strengthen me today physically as well as spiritually. And Lord, I'm asking that that same spirit would come and rest upon the hearts and minds of the congregation that they might grasp what the Lord is saying to them today. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. amen. And amen. It was April 4th of this year. I woke up. And if I seem a little emotional about all of this, because it's very personal to me. I woke up and, and before I could even have a thought in my mind, the term, give me this mountain, was screaming in my spirit. And since that day, that's what I'm asking the Lord to do. I have no clue what that is. <laughs> but I went back to this passage and start searching it out. And there's several things that I want to share with you uh, because I think that each and every one of us 
has a personal inheritance that God has granted out for us. Now, in the day that we're reading, and, and remember, please don't discount the old, old covenant, the Old Testament. That's right. We know that's not our covenant. We know that it's obsolete. But the new covenant was formed by the truths that we yes. can find in the old. So we can find things in the old that apply to the new. Amen? Yes, amen. So and when we look at this, we find that there is an inheritance that God has designated, and they all in those days got together, and they utilized the Urim and the Thummim. It was almost, well, if you'll allow me, the rolling of the dice that would indicate where a person's inheritance was. And there's something very extremely beautiful about that. When God established the families and the tribes and gave them an inheritance, it was written in the law of Moses that they couldn't ever lose it. Mm. They could sell it, but on the year of Jubilee, it came back to them. Amen. See, when God gives you an inheritance, it's permanent. Yes. I want you to hear that this yes. morning. When he yes. designs something just for you, for you, your family, your youngins, and those that will follow, it's just for you. Oh, that's just for some people. No, that's for every single member uh, of the body of Christ because if that was the truth in the Old Testament and the Old Testament gave an inheritance to those that followed holy after the Lord, guess what? Amen. Yes. The same is true today, except even today, it's not the Urim and the Thummim, but it's the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit yes. that comes and guides us, a personal guide to that inheritance. I want you to leave this place this morning know, knowing that God has designated something for every individual yes. that follows the Lord. And to steal a phrase, when you find it, you won't like the way you look. I guarantee it. Amen. Because it'll fit you. It'll fit your family. It'll be perfect because it's designed for the Lord. But it's an inheritance. I want you to get that. that and, and it can't be given away. It can't be, no, I don't want to say it that way. It, it can't be... Um, lost in the mind of the Lord. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance, but God is looking for people who will follow him wholly, W-H-O-L-O-Y, completely, no matter what the cost, and those are, that do that are going to have to learn how to walk by faith. The New yeah. Covenant feature is the just shall live by faith. So what you encounter is not necessarily something that's going to come easily or immediately. In our story, this narrative, Caleb's waited 45 years. Moses promised him the land that his feet walked on. And, and he says now to Joshua, now that the fighting is over, now that he's proven himself as a uh, as a, uh, a battle warrior. He's now ready to walk into the peace and benefit of his inheritance, and even his inheritance is going to be a battle to get. See, if you'll do what you need to do for the group, God will give you the inheritance that you need for you as an individual. Amen. Amen. That's the lesson, isn't it? Yeah. Because one of the worst things that we can do as Christians is go out there as a loner. I believe the Bible teaches us that God sets the solitary in families. You need to hear that. He sets the solitary in families. And our local churches are just that. They are families. That's Amen. why every single person needs to be a part of a good local church. Amen. One where the body is hearing the word of God preached where you can worship as I've seen you do over the years, where you can learn together, where you can make an impact on each other first and your community second. I see the things that are happening, the building next door, all of that's exciting to me because if you allow God to build you together as a unit, there's no telling what impact you could have Amen. on Patterson. Amen. And like, well, what's Patterson? Patterson's your inheritance, Come on. Yes, perhaps. It is. I can't design that for you, but this arena of Morgan City in this area, it's no by chance that God sent this man uh, to teaching an Ameo Bible study years ago and began to teach the message of the cross. It's no, it's no unusual, well, at least that's not the word I'm looking for. It was by design. You're a part of something here that's by design. 
and you need to care for it. You need to find out your role in it. Now, not everybody gets to be the big dog. Amen. <laughs> and I know that if you're not the big dog, and believe me, I know, and you're pulling the sled, the view never changes. <laughs> and some of you will get that. And even good dogs pass gas. But, <laughs> so not everybody's perfect. But you work together as a unit. Yes. Because that's your inheritance. Amen. You don't discourage one another. You help each other. Amen. And at the end of the initial war, there's going to be an inheritance for you. Amen. Something that's obtained and it's beautiful. It's something that's designed by God. And Caleb knows that Moses had promised him a specific thing. Uh, he said, thou knowest in verse 6, the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. But I want to start back in verse 6 because it says here that the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh and Kenizzite, said unto him, give me this mountain. Well, I want you to see that Caleb, Joshua, we know all about Joshua. He's Moses' right-hand man. He's He's the servant of Moses. He's in the tent of the tabernacle. He's right there with him the whole time. Well, who is Caleb? Right. Of all the people in the world, who is this man that we study this morning? Well, he's from uh, a son of Jephunneh, which means that he actually came from the tribe of Reuben. Mm -hmm. Reuben was the son of the 12 of Jacob that was belittled because he went in unto his father's concubine and they said, oh, he's unstable. He's unstable as, of his water. And then his Kenizzite background ties him to Esau. So if you ever had a bad start being tied to Esau and being tied to Reuben is not a good background. It, it, it's the lowest of the low. It's the littlest of the little. It's the smallest of the small. It's the worst of the worst. God can take the smallest of the small. Yes. God can take the worst yes. of the worst. Yes. God can take the man, woman that's nothing and has everything scarred against them in their yes. background and everything from their background holding it said, you can't make it. You'll never be anything. Right. You that's can't right. accomplish anything for God. Look at what you were. Look at where you came from. Look at what, what you were raised up in. God can take a nobody and make us a somebody. Amen. He can bring us together in the congregation of the Lord and cause us to be something that's important. So regardless of Caleb's background, somehow he's joined to the tribe of Judah, and we find that when the leaders are chosen to go in to spy out the land, it's only rulers that are chosen. So somehow from this horrible background, he has risen to the status of a ruler in Judah, and he's one of the 12 that are sent out. I'm just trying to encourage you this morning. Don't you dare sit there this morning and say, hey, I'm, I'm too unworthy. I came from too bad of a background. Come on. Listen, if you'll fo wholly follow the Lord, if you'll do exactly what he says to, if you'll be active where he says active, if you'll be walking in faith where he says to walk in faith, <clears throat> there's no telling where he can bring you. Remember that as a person in the new covenant, you are a stranger from the covenant promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Amen. Guess what? You're in. Amen. You're in. Anything is possible. Yes. Anything is possible. I look at my my own story, and, and a year before I'm I'm saved, I'm a drunk, I'm a drug addict, I'm living in a tent, running from state park to state park, because you could only live in the state park for two weeks, and then they kicked you out. Mm -hmm. And I went to another state park, living in a tent. Humble beginnings. And I brought it on myself through all the drugs and the alcoholism and stupid. Pity. Yes, Stupid yes, yes. stupidity is stupidity. Uh, yeah, that was me. But yet God has taken myself and my wife and our family 
and done things I could have never dreamed of for Amen. years ago. And God is no respecter of persons. Yes. He's got an inheritance for you this month. Doesn't matter where you come from, because promotion doesn't come from the east or the west or the south, but God is the judge. He puts down one and sets Praise up God. Yes. another. Yes. Number two, not only do you have to know, regardless of where you came from, you have to know the route of how to get where you're supposed to go, and that's the truth that Caleb lived by faith. I've already said it, I'm going to say it to you again. Your faith is the greatest commodity that you could ever have, and your pastor is leading you in the foundation of faith. The foundation of the Christian faith demands that you place your faith in Jesus to be saved. There is no other way to get saved. And it demands, this is the foundation now, it demands that you keep your faith in Christ and rest in Him and depend upon Him and you'll watch freedom from sin, freedom from old habits, old ways of life. You'll see that start to drop off. Now, I already know that your pastor preaches those things and teaches those things to you. That's the foundation of every single uh, member in the body of Christ. That's the basis of faith. But faith, once it's been established in the foundation, Paul said that he was a wise master builder and he had others come along and build upon that foundation. We have to be careful how we build on it, Pastor. Yeah. This message is not about Christ and Him crucified. Come on. But it is. Okay. Amen. I've got to, as a pastor, as a teacher, I've got to preach to you the whole Word of God. Come on. Amen. So I'm going to teach and preach eschatology. I'm going to teach and preach examples Amen. of the Old Covenant. I'm going to teach and preach on faith after the foundation for salvation and after the foundation for living yes. is laid. I've got to teach the rest of the Bible. Praise God. I've got to teach all the Bible. Amen. Because the Bible say, itself says that the Bible is inspired. It's God breathed and it's profitable for all things that a person would grow up into it. So I'm going to be having to hear not just Christ and Him crucified, Come on. but once that foundation is laid, now I'm going to need to hear about this inheritance or this labor that God has called me to. Amen. God hasn't called us just to sit in a pew. Come on. Amen. That's really sitting in pew. Come on. Preaching He's called you to labor together. Yes. Yes. He's yes. called you to work together to get something done. Yes. And whether you realize it or not, that's where this is. But it's going to have, you're going to have to accomplish all the tasks that you have by faith. Amen. Caleb lived by faith. Uh, as I said already, of the 603, 550,000 men that actually came out of Egypt, only two entered into their inheritance. That tells us that there's going to be some struggles along the way. Can I get an amen? amen. But Caleb had a greater confidence in God's power than he did confidence in the giants. That's what you've got to learn. Yes. That's now what you need to add to the message of the cross. God. That this work that you're doing, it's going to take faith and faith in Christ and what he's done. But you're going to have to take a look at some giants right in the eye and say, yes, that's sir. in my inheritance and we're taking it. Yeah, Amen. We're going after it. Give me yes, this yes. mountain. Give me this yes. mountain. I, I, don't know, I have no idea what's in Pastor Matt's heart. But I know that God is, again, laying things in there to do something together as a unit to impact the city and the community in which he lives. And in his life and mind, he's crying out, give me this mountain. Yes. And I pray that you are asking the same thing. Not just asking for the individual blessing, but that will come, but as a holistic. Yes. Are, are, you, are you with me this morning? Amen. All right, so Caleb's faith had to be prevalent, but now here's something we don't want to hear. Caleb's faith was strengthened in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Every every time you pass through a difficulty, every time you pass through something that is hard, that is difficult, either as an individual Christian or as a group, every single time you have the opportunity to have your faith strengthened yes. or destroyed. Come on, man. Strengthened or destroyed. Listen to this. 
Caleb saw the destructive destruction of Egypt. He saw the Red Sea experience. He went through battles with Amalek. He watched water flow out of a rock. He saw a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of cloud by night. Man, every morning, he had the types and shadows of the tabernacle, the giving of the law, the greatest revelation of God to man up to that point in time. And in all of these things, they were challenges to his heart to believe. Amen. When you've got to believe God to bring you out of Egypt, Amen. that takes faith. That's a requirement for yes. God to instill something in your individual heart and say, you know what? I'm not going to let this issue of my life throw me down. I'm going to take that issue. I'm going to apply it to the truth of faith in Christ. And I'm going to believe that Christ is going to be uh, victorious, not me, but Christ. As I place my faith in him, I keep my eyes on Christ as I trust him to develop what I need. See, as you go through these trials that we do not like. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's where your faith is going to grow. Right. Faith doesn't grow in, in, on the mountaintop. Right. Faith grows in the valley. Yes. Faith grows as you go through something. Yes. Faith grows as you are intimidated. As you are attacked, as you are obstructed, as you are hindered. Mm. Uh, hindrances can be the greatest step of faith in your life that you ever experienced. But who likes hindrances? But God puts them in our way to see whether or not we will follow him wholly. Will we walk with him and believe him? Those are tests. Those are trials of your faith. First Peter 1 says that the trial of your faith is more precious than silver and gold in the mind of God. But who wants to go through this? So with Caleb, he doesn't, it doesn't matter where he came from if he's following wholly after the Lord. With Caleb, he's gone through a lot of circumstances that uh, demand that he walk by faith. Number three, he doesn't allow the obstacles, the hurts, the pains, the attacks of the enemy to stop him from moving forward. Neither can you. That's right. Neither as an individual or as a group. Amen. His faith kept him from murmuring, complaining, praise God, and doubting. How are you doing on that? <laughs> As he goes through the issues, what we find in the book of Numbers is that a lot of these men that never made the promised land their home, those issues that hindered there were trials of their faith caused them to murmur, complain, gripe. You can't murmur, complain, and gripe in faith. Come on. Yeah. That's good. You can't. It's just the opposite. Murmuring, complaining, and doubting is the lifestyle of the Israelites that didn't go into their yeah, inheritance. That's good. Mm. Oh, and, you know, he had another group he could have joined. He could have gone with Korah. Mm -hmm. Korah decided he didn't like Moses' leadership. Mm -hmm. You take too much on yourself. Not everybody's going to be the leader. chose Moses and Aaron and Korah who had been given his own work had been given special work in the tabernacle that no one else could said Moses and Aaron you're taking too much on yourself we're just as holy and as important as you are and 250 rulers joined Korah's rebellion against Moses and Aaron Caleb wasn't one of them. Praise God. You get it? He didn't like the delay any more than anybody else did. But he wasn't grumbling, complaining, or moaning, or demanding that the leadership be changed. 
you'll remember that God just opened up the earth and swallowed Korah and 250 men and then closed the earth up in it again. Be careful when you oppose what God has built. You gotta be careful. Yes, yes. Don't want the earth to open up. And it can open up in a lot of different ways. Amen? Amen. So faith kept him from murmuring, complaining, doubting. Faith kept him from joining Korah's rebellion and those that were discontented. And last of all this morning, Caleb is patient. So number one, it doesn't matter where you come from. It only matters that you holistically follow after the Lord. You walk by faith. Yes, yes. Number three, every obstacle that you travel through is going to literally build or destroy your faith. Don't Amen. let it destroy your faith. The obstacles you face as an individual or as a church, they should not destroy you. They should build you. And fourthly, and lastly, Caleb is patient. He waits 38 years for everybody else to catch up. Praise God. Take that in. Yeah. Today, I'm a little dis disappointed, is the word. And some of the cross preaching churches that even I've helped build, because they seem to have developed a sectarian attitude that isn't Christ like. Amen. If you have the truth, and you know the truth, then it it should cause you to love the body of Christ yes. in a greater measure Thank than you. ever before. And one of the things that you have to recognize is that every single person that's accepted Christ as their Savior has this treasure in earthen Amen. vessels. Right. And as some translations say jars of clay, what does that mean? That means they belong to him. Yes. They belong to Christ. Now, you, you let Christ do what needs to be done in them. Amen. But for heaven's sakes, don't just shun them or declare them heretics. There's a time for that. If we share the truth and we give the truth and it's rejected and pushed away and we're attacked by it, then I walk away. But to the people that don't know this message, I travel to them. I'm going to come up alongside them and try to share, Amen. like we did yesterday, the truths of what Christ has done for us at Calvary. And guess what I have to be? I have to be as patient with them as God was with me. The pastor mentioned this morning that the first 12 years of his Christian experience, he didn't know the freedom you sang about today. You know how many Christians Amen. are living outside of that freedom? If we create a atmosphere that we are better than, best, that's not Jesus. That's right. That's not the spirit of the Lord. Now we have to be careful because we're not gonna we're not gonna embrace what they are, but we're gonna expose ourselves to them, and that means you're gonna have to rub shoulders Amen. with people that you might not be totally comfortable with. Right, right. But if you love them and give them the opportunity to hear this message instead of becoming <laughs> sectarian, come on, yes, yes. Then you can take this message to the far corners of the earth. Do you understand? There aren't that many truly born again Christians in the world, and we don't have really the right, that's not the way I want to say it, we, we, we've got to move above yes. this holistic, sectarianistic, yes, yes. separatist, yes. ugly heartbeat, Come on. and get in the dirt next to somebody else. How do you think Caleb felt? He's traveling through the desert for 38 years watching unbelievers die. Mm. And you know what? He wasn't happy about it. And he doesn't develop, well, it's just your, he's grieving over it. Because they could have had that inheritance. Yes, yes. So he waits for 38 years. 38 years. How long have you been waiting? 38 years for the others to catch up. Until the time came, he was content to follow first Moses. And then Joshua, he didn't put himself where he didn't need to be. 
Hebrews 6 and 12 says that we're not to be slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Praise God. Through faith and patience, we inherit what God has chosen for us. But only when we wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, completely follow the Lord. We put aside our personal agenda. Amen. We follow what God has for us. We let Jesus transform us into the person who wants us to yes. become. We let the things that need to be changed be changed in us. And then we grab a hold of the kingdom agenda. Praise God. Thy kingdom come. Yes. Thy will be done. Amen. In the last two years, I began to pray in a way that I think is beneficial to me. And just saying, Lord, I don't know what it looks like, but I want you to take me to my highest spiritual potential. Praise God. Whatever the high water mark is that you see, I can reach. Help me to get there. Yes. And Lord, whatever the high water mark is that you've chosen for me for ministry, help me to arrive there. Don't let me assume I even know what that is. But I'm praying, Lord, take me to that. What that does is that takes it all out of my hands. Praise God. Amen. I'm no longer striving to do something or become something. I'm just operating in the will of God and letting him bring to me what I need to bring me to my highest potential spiritually and to my highest potential ministerially. Yes. That's what I want. The Bible says that Jesus came and he said, sacrifice and offering you would not but a body yeah you given. hallelujah so that's me lord here i am a body yes. you have given me take me to my highest potential in your eyes don't let me establish <laughs> a, a high water mark that is below what you would do in me but it's going to take time to get there it's going to take patience. It's going to take that we fully follow the will of the Lord. And in Hebrews 10, 36, the author says, For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Praise God. So ladies and gentlemen, I come to you this morning, and I want you to start asking the Lord for your highest potential spiritually your highest potential in ministry. I want you to come together as a unit and get something done. I want you to be able to accomplish the task of taking this gospel, first in its foundations of Christ and Him crucified, and the teaching of the rest of the Word of God that accompanies it to the rest of the world or to the world that God has granted to you and pastor to accomplish. Amen. Give me this mount. Praise God. Give me this mount. Are you ready to cry that to God? Give me this mountain. You have promised me something. And I'm praying for something I haven't even seen, Pastor. I don't even know what I'm praying for. I just know that on April the 4th, when I woke up, that was in my spirit and it wasn't from the devil. Amen. Give me this mountain. Praise God. We can come from nothing. We operate by faith. Our faith is going to be tried. And we have to be patient as God builds up and prepares for us the things that are before us. Give me this mountain. Let's pray. Yes. Heavenly Father, I thank you today for the opportunity to minister the word. I pray that what has been stated, what has been said, has made inroads to the heart and minds of these here and these that would watch later by, tele or by television or by radio or by internet. And Lord, we're just asking that you would help. Help us to understand where we need to be, what we need to do, what we need to become, and equip us in that, in Jesus' name, amen.